Well, g'day there, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me on this Monday afternoon market recap. We do have approximately one hour, maybe one hour and 15 minutes left in today's session, but I think at this particular point, we have enough content, obviously, to move forward with, even to take this one step further to say, really, I'm inundated with pieces of analysis that at this particular juncture, it is going to take a little bit of time to actually work through, but I do believe you're really seeing the picture naturally of what is unfolding, what has been scheduled to actually unfold really since the entirety of the calendar year of 2020. I will begin this video, first of all, just to bring up the yearly chart on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I know there's a lot of uh, actual annotations on my screen. So what I'll do is actually remove these or just hide them temporarily. I want you to pay attention to this. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Here we are really late in the month of February, We're almost transitioning already into the month of March. But I just wanted to point out that all of the analysis and the best thing about this is that you can go through my YouTube channel, you can go through and timestamp all of these pieces of analysis that I have put out here on a routinely or on a routine basis, Monday to Friday. And really what we've been coming to, or at least the conclusion has been that the markets themselves are going to move into a dip prior to, of course, continuing deeper and higher into 2020. When I say high, I'm referencing, of course, higher prices, which is going to lead to some form of a parabolic blow off top. It's very different, obviously, to what is happening in the markets as at, or at least during today's session as at Monday. It really continued, or at least it began on Thursday and Friday of last week. But the big thing to point out right now is a lot of that analysis that I've been speaking about is really coming to fruition. Again, this is the yearly chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we're down 511 points on the yearly candlestick. Again, just to bring this into perspective for you, it means that everyone who has come back from holidays, come back to begin the new year 2020 after, again, the really nice runoff and the runoff up into those most recent all-time highs that really began at the end of 2019, they've come back, they've bought into the market, Every single one of those people out there, not only in the United States, but around the world, they are now underwater if they are still holding those positions. In fact, they've really been taken to the cleaners today. Uh, the markets themselves clubbed, absolutely clubbed. You can see we're down 511 points on the yearly candlestick. On the S&P 500, we're not down as much, but we have just moved negative. You can see we're down 0 0.09 on a yearly candlestick. That is obviously going to change. That is going to worsen. If I bring up the Dow Jones Transportational Average, again, we are, or if I can bring this up, it is a little bit of a lag on my system at the moment. You can see we're down 441 points when I bring it up on the Russell 2000. Again, we're down 40 points as well. In my opinion, this is just the beginning of what is going to be a major intermediate market top. I've been speaking about that again for quite some time. The only market at this particular juncture that isn't negative year to date at this point is the NASDAQ. We are still treading water, albeit... Um, by not all that much, we're up 255 points. Again, this is going to change over the coming weeks and also most likely this particular juncture coming months. And I just wanted to point that out to you. Every single person, again, who has bought from this candlestick over here, now they are underweight. All of these signals that we've been speaking about, right? The bearish divergences, they are playing out very nicely. The market's eking out most recently in the month of February, a higher high. But what we saw was a non-committal state across the board in these oscillating indicators. Most importantly, it has been the MACD. Um, again, this goes back to the video. I've put out a couple of videos more recently about this. We've been talking and referencing about the trapdoor of the market being below this candlestick just here, this one white candlestick that really negated this three-day reversal pattern over here. This is what we call an evening star reversal. This was a little bit of a surprise even for myself, a little bit of market noise. But again, over the weekend, we put out that video and I was discussing right the benefits or at least the reality of this exhaustion gap just here, the difference between that of Tuesday's candle last week and of course, the Wednesday interest session high that was really rejected across the board uh, for all of the markets and to a lesser extent on the transportation average in the Russell 2000, which never got back above its respective high, which is a major red alert signal we've been talking about again. Just a bunch of exhaustion gaps, the divergences, the loss of momentum to the upside. And this is just how quickly a market can unravel today. The S&P 500, again, with just over an hour left in today's session, we're down over 100 points on this individual market. We're down very close to 3% at this particular time. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, a very similar uh, story right here. You can see just the bottom, the floorboard, just being, taking out, uh, being taken out from underneath the market. And it is getting absolutely hammered, absolutely hammered. And again, I just wanted to say at the beginning of this analysis piece, I wanted to thank um, every single person out there around the world who's been watching this analysis, who's hopefully been listening to it and taking action. My inbox during today, it has just been going off. I've received so many emails from people 
first of all, thanking me for the analysis that I do. And I just wanted to say, that's why I do it. It's essentially here to help you. And number two, a lot of people have also emailed in saying that they've taken put positions over the past, uh, at least last week in particular, and a bunch of those trades, just to reference a couple, Apple, Caterpillar, Microsoft, um, not so much Netflix, but certainly Google as well. A lot of them have just absolutely cleaned up today. So I wanted to take the moment just to congratulate you and also extend the hand also to people out there who may be struggling to actually understand analysis, to actually bring it all together, to bring the concepts, the different elements of technical analysis together, to really understand just what is going on, obviously behind the mark and what is underpinning it, not so much at the moment now that really we're in a complete free fall across the board. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off the annotations once again, or actually bring them back so we can move with the structures that we've been talking about over the past number of months. But really at this particular point, especially for myself, I mean, again, it's been a very slow start to 2020. People who are privy to this public forum here on YouTube and also obviously people in that pro analysis class who have much more detail into the application, the forward-looking state of the US financial markets and individual trades understand that it has been a very slow uh, beginning to 2020. We've been very reluctant, okay, to actually taking any bullish trades and it has been uh, quite a difficult process for a lot of people to really comprehend. But now at this particular point, I think it might be a little bit easier as to why people, all right, or as to why myself, have just simply been watching this market from afar and really I've used the term antithesis, the antithesis to what we saw at least to begin 2019 whereby we were coming out of, of course, that Q4 2018 sell-off whereby we were coming in and we were saying, wow, there's a lot to be excited about at least to begin 2019 and really throughout 2019 and that held to be true. Obviously, we take a lot or we took a lot of bullish trades and we really rode them all the way through to December of 2019. We closed them out and really since that date just before Christmas, we've just been watching this market, just waiting for an opportunity like this to unfold. Here we are Thursday, Friday, and of course today's session on Monday, we're just plummeting down to our green rectangular box. Surprise, surprise, I haven't changed any of these boxes. They've been on my screen for a couple of months. And I hope you can see the benefit of what it means to actually wait and then to strategically understand where it makes a lot of sense when you actually see confluence levels of where it makes sense to actually buy these markets. That is what we're going to be focusing on over the coming weeks and months. Let me just say a couple of things before we get there. First of all, this market is not done selling off. So um, at this particular point, although it may seem a little bit scary, if you're looking at the market and you're thinking to yourself, boy, I hope, or at least you're playing into your emotional side and you're saying to yourself, well, I hope this is the bottom of the market drop. I hope it turns around and it rallies. It may very well do that. It may very well rally back and up to say 3325 on the S&P 500. However, this is just the beginning of that major intermediate reversal, whereby again, you can bet almost guarantee that this market is going substantially lower. If I bring this up on the weekly charts of the oscillating indicators, have a look at this. We're only just starting to really see those divergence crosses. We're obviously going to get the updated print as at the close during Monday session. But by all means, this market is nowhere near oversold. In fact, really what we're doing is we're just moving out of overbought territory. So there's a lot of distance and a lot of way, a lot of oscillation still to move until we actually get anywhere close to being even short term oversold. But again, when you're talking and thinking and at least referencing that of the weekly uh, oscillating indicators, you have to go back again to that really good example, that prime example of 2018, whereby we got similar divergences setting up across the market. I've referenced them on the daily time frame at the moment, right on the weekly. But what you're starting to see is potentially if you were to count all of these individual candlesticks, one candlestick uh, equates to one week of trade. You can really say that again, this bordered on about 12 to 13 weeks of a continued market sell-off. Yes, there were up weeks during that of the larger, more intermediate sort of decline. And you can expect that period of what we saw in Q4 of 2018. Uh, it's what we're seeing right now is at least the beginning of a similar uh, pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to look for opportunities to again, begin nibbling on core contracts and obviously to actually move into the market long, but these are still going to come at substantially lower prices. The reason I say this, and it's really important that you understand this is that I've been referencing the M word and people have been commenting on the videos and they've been saying, well, what does M stand for? And again, I'll just tell you, it stands, for, it, it, sorry, it stands, pardon me, for murder. All right, when you see a double top, think of M and murder, obviously, it really denotes and represents a really negative thing. And uh, here we are in the markets and we've just broken the actual neckline. So if you wanted, and, and also what we've been referencing, obviously, has been the construction of this M pattern, this double top pattern. Well, what I can say 
is that during today's session, or at least as I sit here on this timestamp at the moment, is that we've now definitively broken, right, the neckline of this move. And what we were speaking about in the weekend's class just gone, again, that's up on the, the website. It's a recorded class and all the analysis classes, I mean, they go back months and months and months. But if you wanted to take the actual range from the neckline and project it up, of course, to that secondary, right, right top, which we've just established more so in the midsection of February. If you wanted to extend that down as an absolute minimum as to where this market's going to go, you're looking at the Dow Jones all the way down here at about 27,000 points. I think we're going to overshoot that. I think we're, over, we're going to overshoot that quite comfortably. I'm going to tell you why that is in a moment. But on the S&P 500, you can see that we're right on the neckline as well. Obviously, we've got this open window. You know my thoughts and how I stand on open windows. A lot of this is going to be driven by market noise come Tuesday and probably for this week as well, whether or not we just see a complete collapse coming into the market on Tuesday or at least a continued collapse or whether or not we're actually going to see dip buyers showing up at the neckline. All of this is going to be rather futile. Any buyers around this location, they are going to be um, ultimately whacked as well. So we could see, of course, the markets come on and rally back on up to close the open windows. But the end game, so to speak, on the intermediate time frame, and this is really where our analysis been, has been for the entirety of 2020, it's leading to significantly lower prices. And this is just the beginning of that intermediate move that I've been warning about. So again, it's it's finally nice to see this play out. I mean, I'm, I'm not happy whatsoever that the market is taking this route. It's been largely sort of expected and we've been waiting for it to uh, to actually play out. But unfortunately for sort of the unconditioned trader out there who's purely just trading on impulse and is just driven by that FOMO effect and the idea that they're missing out on just completely risk-free gains up and around these all-time highs, They've really been caught out. Another analogy, of course, is getting their hand or at least getting caught with the hand in the cookie jar. That, by all means, has just come true today. And it's a complete bloodbath across the board in the US financial market indices. So I just wanted to say, if you find yourself not actually long the market at the moment, and if you've been doing the right thing at an absolute minimum, and just watching this and just listening to what I've been talking about, you've really saved yourself potentially a lot of money in your capital account if you were to actually be holding open market positions um, in on anything really in the long direction because again it's just been across the board absolute bloodbath taking back uh, taking place now this is what I mean by whereby um, I expect the markets to drop considerably lower again this has been privy to people in pro over the past number of weeks and again I would strongly encourage you I say this every now and then uh, in these sort of public forums here on YouTube but again in my opinion humbly the real analysis, right? The real value in the analysis is really kept and it's housed in that pro analysis class. A lot of these videos here on YouTube, generally they look backwards, okay? And what we're doing is we're just recapping, obviously, the forward-looking analysis that we do each and every week in that pro analysis class. So the real benefit is obviously in pro at this point. If you've been following along with this public forum for quite some time, I think you can tell that we've had our finger on the pulse of this market quite, uh, quite correctly, for quite some time. That's been the case really since we established this, or I established this all the way back in 2011. So I just wanted to encourage you to go and have a look at that class. If again, you might be feeling a little bit um, a little bit confused at this particular point, you might be feeling a little bit scared. That's uh, completely normal for a lot of people who uh, you know may not truly understand the mechanics of the market and what is actually driving the market. But really, when you take a look at the transportation leverage, again, something that we were talking about was the back test, especially on if I could bring it up on the correct market. I'll start with the Russell. It's been the back test of this third decelerating fan line. So you've got one, two, three, and you've got the fourth. The fourth is the macro bull trend. So again, as long as the market holds up above this bullish trend over here, you can expect again, our general thesis, so to speak, of an intermediate correction down to lower prices to begin 2020 to play out to hold. And then obviously the reversal and what will be the break of what appears to be some form of an ascending triangle on the Russell 2000. So at this point, that still holds true. It's going to be very scary the lower we go for a lot of people. But I hope you can tell at this particular point on the Russell 2000, when we start referencing market breadth, that this is really the trajectory that the market should take. And it probably will take over the next probably two months, maybe three months. This might be, by the way, just to sort of uh, really prepare you for this. And a lot of people are just simply unprepared because they've become used or uh, at least because, at least the normalcy of this continued bull market trend that we've seen since the breakout in October, they've come used to just coming into the market and, and seeing this market up, say, uh, you know, a quarter of a percent here, a third of a percent there, and they just think that that's going to continue in a linear fashion. It's not how these things play out, but getting back into this intermediate correction, it wouldn't surprise me to actually see this market take up to 
And this is probably going to shock a lot of people, but it's something you need to be consciously aware of. It might take up to roughly six months until we definitively see a base on this market down and around this area at 1450 on the Russell 2000 until we actually allow the weekly oscillators and I'm going to write the MACD here to actually base to bottom out into oversold territory and then begin to turn up. So if you're looking at the Russell 2000, if you're referencing market breadth, this is the location that you want to be looking at. This is where the confluence of support is setting up. We've seen the very clear rejection of this third decelerating fan line at the moment, going back to the beginning of this bull market run in March of 2009. The trajectory of this now is back to that fourth decelerating fan line, which is going to differentiate that of an expansion, which is still what we are currently in and that of a, a complete contraction in economic activity. So as long as we hold above this fourth decelerating fair line on the Russell 2000, this is going to essentially override, right? A lot of the movement and a lot of the continued volatility that we are going to see in the, in the S&P, the Dow and the NASDAQ as well. So we're trading up here at 16.27. I'm not going to do the maths. It's a little too early in the morning for me, but around 1450 over here is going to be that general vicinity. I think we're actually going to overshoot it temporarily. And the reason I say that is because it's going to be that last whipsaw opportunity whereby a lot of overly zealous sort of bears get caught out whereby they assume that the actual net movement is going to break below, hold and continue below. Um, a lot of this support that was built during the 2019 calendar year prior to this little run that we've seen, much like the markets pushing back on up to most recent swing highs, for the Russell 2000, but what has been that continued bull market sort of trend when you think about it in terms of the S&P, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ as well. So again, pay attention to this. We started speaking about this a number of months ago on the Russell 2000, and now it's coming to fruition. When I change on over into the oscillators, have a look at this. All of those divergences that I've been referencing are playing out. Those trap doors, okay, it's been speaking about, Part of me, my mouse isn't really working all that well. That's meant to say trap door below these white candlesticks that's just played out the bottom's fallen out of the market and again if you net short at this particular point you're doing fantastically well we're below the exponential moving averages if i can bring up the simples we're coming back down to the rising 100 that's not really going to do all that much it might provide some very short-term temporary relief but again any rally that these markets take is going to be an opportunity to reposition yourself on the short side the reason I, I, I say that is because you have to understand the psychology of what the ordinary person is doing right now. They've come into the week this Monday and they're probably shell-shocked at this particular point and they're saying to themselves, well, um, they're saying to themselves, look, if, if I have another opportunity whereby equity prices move up and I'm still holding my equity positions that are now flashing red and they're probably deeply red at this particular point, I'm going to use this opportunity to actually sell to close those original equity positions. And that's what's going to lead to, right, the supply up here at a higher price around the gap fill or the opening of the gap window, which is then going to propel price to lower uh, lower levels to take out what may be a swing, a little swing low over here that we're, that we're sort of pricing in on the S&P 500. It's also similar for the NASDAQ as well, very important as well, we're sitting on the neckline. So again, the ordinary person is right now praying for some market relief. They're praying for a market rally. They're praying for people to come in and to actually buy the dip. However, um, the prevailing sentiment is is very much the same for the majority of those people, right? They're all looking to actually sell at a higher price to actually liquidate those original positions that they've actually got into in the calendar year of 2020. And it's going to act as a severe sort of headwind and just a natural weight upon the market if we do see equity prices rally from this or what is now Monday session, what is becoming very much on my um, charts at the moment, almost the end of day closing candlesticks at this particular point. So again, a lot of people reaching out. I just wanted to say thank you so much for that. Uh, really appreciate it. It's always nice to read those emails. If you have any questions, email me success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Uh, but at this particular point, this is where it gets exciting because if you've been listening to me and listening to this analysis and understanding um, just where we are in terms of the timestamp of this market and what to expect further into 2020, we've got this bang on. We had 2019 bang on as well. And what I can say is this is not going to be the macro top on the market. So if you think it is, I'd really um, ask you to reconsider that as nicely as I can. Much like a lot of uh, bears who's, you know, have routinely been commenting on my sort of videos that I've been posting since coming back from, from my own personal vacation. A lot of silence more recently, and that's fine. That's okay. Um, but this here is going to turn into a buying opportunity again. It's not going to happen in the next couple of sessions. It's not going to happen probably in the next week or two, it's going to be most likely a multi-month, right? Push 
and a little bit of a trend, a counter trend back into those primary bullish macro trend lines, okay, into areas of confluence whereby naturally we're going to see the exhaustion of this if it's non-recessionary, which at this point, it still is that case. So I just wanted to point that out, an absolute bloodbath taking place today. It really began on Thursday after the rejection on Wednesday across the board collectively on the US financial market indices. This is the power of the market once it throws a hissy fit. And the hissy fit you can see sort of building and building and building beneath the surface, especially in terms of market breadth. But again, that non-committal state of the Dow theory, obviously the transportational average not really confirming or not confirming whatsoever the movements in the industrial average. Again, a lot of the kindred spirits have been sort of taking over this market or, or just completely consuming this market to begin 2020. We've been waiting for it. We've been recognizing it. We've been moving with it. We've just been acknowledging it and allowing it to sort of run its course until the momentum inevitably begins to turn. That's what's happened. And now we're really starting to see, right, the elasticity of the market snap back in the opposite direction. So again, we're going to have to monitor this. All right, continued um, or at least moving forward as well. But at the same time, I would be reluctant to jump into long positions at this area when we're still identifying these. And again, you can just see these green rectangular boxes on my screen. They've been there for a very long time, right? As to where we think or at least expect these markets to move based on historically accurate, right? Technical analysis and similar sort of scenarios or environments leading up to this technical turn. This is definitely an intermediate top. I think you can all see this. Also, we've got the Japanese rounding tops. And also, if you wanted to extend this a little bit further, I'll ask the question. I'll count it down. I have to ask the question first, obviously. But what chart pattern is this, which is now establishing on all of these market indices? And I'll count it down. Three, two, one. It's what we call an island reversal. You see, you've got, you see how we've got this gap over here, right? And we've continued up. We've exhausted over here with this exhaustion gap. And now we've just seen a complete reversal gap in the opposite direction. This is what creates... If I can bring up my blue pen, the actual island itself, right? This is the island. You've got the gap here and the gap here. So this is truly, I mean, when you when you bring all of this together and, you, and you're saying to yourself, well, what do I do? Number one, first of all, if you're not already bearish and if you haven't been concerned about the market, probably now you are a little bit concerned. You're late to the party, but that's fine. What you want to do is you want to stop the bleeding, obviously, if you are long positions or if you are still in equity trades. I'm not telling you to sell. You can do obviously whatever you want. But what I am saying is that I expect these markets to drop lower and to drop considerably lower. A lot of people think that's somewhat impossible, but I'm telling you it's not. And then, of course, what we're going to do, and this has been the premise of our analysis really for the entirety of 2020, has been buying at discounted prices from people who are completely, uh, unfortunately for them, um, sort of being driven irrationally to some extent anyway by the psychological sort of uh, component of trading the financial markets. A lot of people don't understand sort of the... Uh, um, the mind zone that they're walking into, uh, potentially, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a crazy place sometimes. And a lot of the time to a lot of people's detriment is that they don't realize that prior to transacting in the financial markets, it's a complete, um, it's a head case out there sometimes. And the entire premise really has been us people in this pro family, people who watch this YouTube uh, sort of resource here, it's going to be buying at discounted levels, distressed levels from people who are under the effect of, well, what do I do now? Just completely driven by their emotions, obviously the pain of positions moving against them. We will be buying from them in a matter of weeks and probably over the space of a number of months, depending on where this market actually stops its decline from. But at this particular point, the bears have lost, sorry, the bulls have lost control. The bears are firmly in control and really, if you're not in positions, and again, I extend this to people who may just be neutral. I understand that's sort of uh, the, 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 the sort of the scenario for a lot of people. You've got a really good opportunity here because number one, it's you should be completely stress-free at this particular point. You've got no open positions and uh, you've just completely sidestepped a bloodbath, which is good because you've saved and you've preserved your capital. Number two is the benefit for you is that if the market rallies, you've got an opportunity to begin entering into short positions at higher prices based off this gap closure up here. It's, uh, I'm not sure if this is actually going to play out, but it is certainly uh, the potential of happening. If not, okay, and this is a, in, in continuation of that, if you want to see that happen, you're going to have to see some reversal signals from pretty much this neckline where we're currently trading at. That will give you the green light to do that. Um, otherwise, right, every percentage point that these markets drop is another percentage point that you can at some future point Put in your back pocket in terms of a return on investment once we start to see these markets turn around and rally off from their natural lower areas of support confluence. But for the time being, I know I've been repeating myself for a little bit, 
firmly at this point the bears are in control and i'm happy that the people privy to this information and this resource uh, we've been talking about it for quite some time and um, hopefully you've sidestepped a lot of this chaos which unfortunately from for the markets themselves has been a long time coming but this is not the end of the volatility in fact the vix is up what over very close to 50 percent. i think i just i looked at it before it was up around 46 47 percent in a day um, and, and that's just a signal of, of people being shocked, right? Across the board, an absolute bloodbath out there. Pay attention to the Russell 2000, pay attention to the Dow Jones transportation average. Allow this market to settle over the coming days. It's going to be interesting to see how Tuesday's session actually plays out. But really, you have to move into the headspace. All right, if I can bring this up, the weekly chart here. You have to move into the headspace that this right here is going to be sort of the timing factor as to how long this correction is going to last for, right? It's not until you see this in the weekly time frame when you're looking at the MACD in particular, whereby it's going to be late to the party, yes, but once we start to see these histogram bars begin to lose its acceleration, you're going to know that we are towards the end of this intermediate correction, which is then naturally going to turn back up and ultimately take out the swing highs that we've just priced in. So again, this is the building of future returns. The, the, the deeper this market corrects, and that's the way you need to look at this market. And then hopefully, sooner rather than later, we'll be coming back into the analysis. It will just be loading up on a bunch of, of long trades as, again, the prevailing sentiment is going to be probably recession, recession, recession. Uh, it's the end of the world. I think you sort of get the picture of what we're talking about at this particular uh, timestamp. So again, if you have any questions, please email me success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Otherwise, jump into that analysis class, that Pivot Point Pro analysis class. The link is below this video right now. And again, you're going to learn so much information, valuable information that the whole premise anyway is to teach you so that ultimately you can be autonomous in your own decision making. That's the whole idea of it. It's not a cheat sheet. It's just the application of the analysis. But however, the big distinction between this and Pro is that Pro is always forward looking. It's what is upcoming for the week ahead in these uh, sort of youtube sort of recaps it's retrospective we're looking backwards it's in hindsight generally apart from when of course i sort of intertwine a little bit of analysis about the future but it might seem a little bit flippant or ethereal there is structure to it and there is reasoning very solid reasoning behind that it's all kept in that pro analysis class as well so again be careful out there everyone um be very careful out there i wish you well on this monday evening i know it's not the best way to start a week depending on which side of the market you've been looking at but again, hopefully, if you've been listening to this uh, YouTube resource here, you've, you've sort of listened to the analysis form over the past couple of months. And uh, it makes sense to you because that's all I want it to do. I want it to be crystal clear with you so that, again, you're not holding on to any of this angst. You're not holding on to any of this fear that's probably gripping the market at the moment. For most market participants out there, this is going to be a fantastic buying opportunity like it was towards the beginning of 2019. Imagine going back and saying to yourself, what you would do if you could just go back and buy down here at 23,432 on the industrial average. Imagine going back and being able to buy the S&P at 2,525 points. The NASDAQ, these are all these are all timestamp short and long trades, but this is the first long trade on the NASDAQ down here at 6,696. This is what this is leading to at the moment here at the beginning of 2020. And as this sentiment turns more and more bearish, it's just going to be further opportunity in the long term. If you If you sort of push your forecasts out or at least your investment time horizon out deeper into 2020 again you'll be paid off much like there was so much like really the entirety of 2019 but at this particular point we may be confident and this is what i'll leave you on this is probably going to be the final intermediate correction that we're just beginning to see at the moment prior to the big macro top that i expect will print or price in maybe at late 2020 if not I mean, I have to be very careful what I say here, but if it's not 2020, late in 2020, it's almost a certainty that that, that macro timestamp, that top on the market is going to come in 21. But I'll keep you updated on that. Obviously, that's going to be housed in pro as well. But at this particular point, sit back, strap in, and just wait uh, for the opportunity to start allocating capital back into the market at, at relatively speaking, distressed prices that are going to be substantially lower than where we're currently closing out or close to closing at. Uh, as at Monday session as well. So I'm going to leave it there, everyone. Uh, be safe, be well. If you have any questions, email me success at Pivot Point Trading. Otherwise, I'll be back with you later in the week for some more market addresses. All the best. Goodbye.